Hi, hi. Uh, how are you? I hope you're all doing well. Today, I bring you yet another Mandela Washington Fellow here at Jackson State University. She's going to introduce herself. She's going to tell us the country she comes from. And then we'll dive into business. Hi everyone, back at home. My name is Sarah Kukoni. I'm also known as Pat Queen. I'm from Nigeria. And I am a public health development practitioner, a menstrual health advocate. Then I also run a social enterprise called Alora Invisible Pads. So we have the Pad Queen. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Sarah, uh, tell us about your business. Okay, thank you very much for having me here. It's so um, great to talk about what I do. So, I run the social enterprise called Alora Reusable Pads, and we produce and distribute Alora Reusable Pads. These are made from cotton fibers, and we are solving the problem of pure poverty, that is lack of access to menstrual sanitary um supplies for young girls in nigeria and we're doing this by ensuring that girls have access to affordable cost effective and eco-friendly menstrual supplies so that they can be able to stay in school for everyone that has been following me for a very long time you know this is at uh, the bottom of my heart like it's it is something that i am so passionate about yeah. so i'm happy that you are here to talk about it thank you so um what inspired you to start this business okay one of the things that inspired me to start this business is that growing up as a young girl in nigeria um from a poor social economic background it was difficult for me having access to sanitary towel myself and ha having that face going through that face i know how it impacted my education and other area of my life as a young girl so after leaving secondary school not working in the development sector that is not for profit organizations in Nigeria, going to schools to engage with girls on different projects that were handy, I realized that this problem still exists even after many years. And that made me know that it wasn't like a problem that was peculiar to me or unique to me. It was something that cut across like um, every home, especially for girls from poor home social economy background. And I've seen the impact it has on their education, not just education, their health, overall health. Miss young girls at risk of STIs because when they don't have money or they don't have access to sanitary pads, they are prone to engage in sex for pads, um, having sex with older men to just be able to get money for them to be able to get pads. They miss out of schools, they don't concentrate in class, and so many things that interlinked with that. So that inspired me or motivated me to start this. And also in doing that, in addressing the problem of lack of access to sanitary tools, We've been able to also employ women, women and young people cut across the um, production process, the supply and the distribution. And also, it has also enabled us to provide not just products, because mm -hmm. it goes beyond products, to provide access to menstrual health, education and information. And that is why I also wrote uh, my wow. period book. It's a um, frequently has questions, resource materials to provide information to young girls and boys on menstrual health, menstrual hygiene, as well as um, the teen's blueprint. So okay. this is using storytelling, illustrations and activities for teenagers and adolescents to be able to understand the phase of life they are going through. You know, there's this culture of silence and shyness in Africa where young people cannot ask their parents about the changes that is going through in their body. So this book provides information giving readers access to be able to have like very illustrative um, information for them to know about changes their body are going through as well as activities that they can engage in to be able to help wow. them. It also serves as conversation starter between parents and children. Wow, 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 Sarah, you're doing um, a great job. Thank you very I'm much. I'm inspired. Thank um, you. So this, uh, maybe to let you know that even in Uganda, we have the same challenges. Wow. Um, we still have um, girls who miss school because they're in their periods. And when I see you doing this, I feel so inspired. Thank you. So um, what are some of the challenges that you faced along uh, this journey? Running a business in Nigeria is not mm -hmm. easy, especially for young people 
who not as if you have access to capital to be able to start the business like you started the business as a result of you trying to solve a problem mm -hmm. right so it's not like you even have access to the you have business knowledge for me like i said i work in the development sector i run uh, my own non profit so being in a business was like something new for me so there were challenges first in terms of production there were challenges in terms of like business management itself like um, the accounting, bookkeeping, um, even the challenges of um, factors beyond our control, which are the environmental factors, like um, there are electricity issues in Nigeria because we burn lots of fuel. We don't have constant light in Nigeria. There is the issues of government regulations. For young people trying to start business, the, the regulatory bodies are so stiff. Um, there are no um, friendly environment to support young people doing business. So, like so many young people are passionate about something, like, and the government are supposed to support them, like uh, hold their hands, mm -hmm. to to rather mm -hmm. stiff them and make this um, hard and difficult for them. Access to funds is difficult. So those are the numerous challenges that young people, even women, that are trying to own their own businesses are going through. Um, but how I have been able to uh, navigate that is be is persevering mm -hmm. i mean like for me passion drives me and the fact that i'm passionate about what i do so i see these challenges as stepping stone so i also able to learn from people that have gone ahead of me look at the things they did so i follow a lot of um, people who run their business entrepreneurs in nigeria who run their business um, virtually or online on social media so reading their post it helps to um, encourage I also have mentors who provide support and guidance on what to do so that has been very helpful wow i i love the packaging yeah thank you very much and also uh the wording behind it's really yeah it's beautiful so um now i want you to like enlighten me about um the difference between uh periodic poverty and then um poor menstrual hygiene all right thank you very much so for period poverty it's a term we use in the development space to mean that lack of access to menstrual sanitary supplies lack of access to wash facilities lack of access to medication so pain relief for cramps so when a young girl is going through a menstrual period every month and do not have the things she needs to be able to observe her period in an hygienic and dignified manner, it's equals to period poverty. Mm -hmm. So when there is no access to sanitary supplies, there is no access to a private space for her to change. Maybe she's in school. I know most of us are going to school, mm -hmm. so dilapidated, no toilet. Even if there is a toilet, maybe it's just bad one that they cannot comfortably stay there and there is no separate toilet for boys that provide them with privacy. So all those things, there's no water for them to change, to wash their hands and their private parts during this period. So all this means period poverty. They don't even have access to pain relief for cramps. So this put together is what we term period poverty. Why um, poor menstrual hygiene is that it's as a result of girls not having knowledge about the things to do when they're on their period, mm -hmm. which results into them not doing the right thing and then then maybe probably having um, unhygienic menstruation, like wearing a sanitary pad. And another thing I would want to say is poor hygiene, um, poor menstrual hygiene can also be as a result of um, poverty. Mm. So when young girls do not have enough sanitary towels, you can see a girl wearing one pad for 24 hours, which is not supposed to be so. Wearing pads, even the disposable or the reusable or menstrual cups are supposed to be worn within four to six hours and to be changed. But because there is no money and mm. disposable pads are now so crazily expensive in Nigeria, I don't know if that's the same in Uganda, mm -hmm. so expensive that it makes girls the wait for 24 hours, which is not supposed to be, it can lead to um, shock, toxic shock in the body because when the uh, microorganism can, as a result of that, start growing from there and it infects um, the vagina, which is not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Another thing is not having access to water. So young girls are supposed to take their bath twice when they are on their period. They're supposed to be 
highly um, observing their hygiene, change their PM parts within four to six hours, take their baths, you know, do all those things that they're supposed to do, wash their panties, change into any panties. And that's part of the things I addressed in my book mm -hmm. called My Period. Because some young girls don't have access to this information. They don't even know what menstruation is before they start because they've not had any information about this. And that's part of why we're also advocating that there should be information on copious sexuality education and menstruation in our school curriculum so that people, girls and young people can have access to this information before they start so when they don't know about these things and there is no one to put them through parents are always busy or they are shy to have this conversation with their girls they just are left to do this thing on their own to figure it out on their own which makes them to not do it in the right way and having poor menstrual hygiene can lead to um, urinary tract infection can make them at risk of urinary tract infection vaginal infection so these are the dangers of um, poor menstrual health wow um so how are you finding the fellowship oh the fellowship has been interesting so far to be honest met um lots of um, other fellows from various african countries doing amazing things one thing is young people young africans are super super amazing like we despite not having any support yet we are doing our best like in the, with the limited resources mm -hmm. that we have we're trying to do our best in our various communities so it's so amazing meeting people interacting and forging this relationship and collaboration wow so um do you have a social media presence are you on social media yes uh we're on social media um if you can check just google alora parts everything about alora parts will come out and if it is me, just type my name, Sarah Kukunui, and everything about me will definitely come out. Wow. So, uh, what advice do you have for uh, everyone that is going to watch this video? Okay, so everyone um, that is watching this video, for every young person seeing this, my advice is that you should be a change maker in your community. You don't have to wait until you become a fellow to become a change maker. You can do a bit, every little thing in your community, from telling people not to discard debt or waste on the roads, to ensuring that you're doing the right thing, arriving at the place you're supposed to be on time, no African time, to ensuring that you're having integrity and honesty in your dealings, and just going ahead to be a change maker in your community, no matter how small that is. Wow. Um... Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. For accepting to uh, give us your time Thank and you. uh, uh, have us interview you. I'm really honored. And uh, Thank you very Thank much you so for much. having me. Thank yeah. you.